Uh, hello and welcome to the Prem Pushkaran Gayatri. Hi, 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 hi. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Sujal is re uh, receiving so much of appreciation from everybody, critics, audience alike. So first, congratulations. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. I'll actually start a bit back from, bit back from 2017 when your first smash hit came out and has been in the minds of everybody, uh, including me. I watched it much later though, Vikram Veda. Um, so from Vikram Veda and then, you know, almost five years later, you have Sujal. So um, what has been the journey like from there, from a film, a full-fledged film to a OTT series? See, uh, so in between uh, the, the Hindi uh, version of Vikram Veda was in the pipeline. Uh, but we wanted to try out long form uh, storytelling. Uh, so there was this idea which we wrote in 2014 15 times and then kept it aside saying like, this is definitely long form, it's not uh, a feature. At that, that point of time, uh, uh, OTT platforms were not there in India. Uh, so we knew the big boys would be coming in at some point of time and uh, we had just shelved it at that. Uh, then after we completed the release, uh, uh, Amazon approached us and said like, uh, uh, we are looking at doing South Originals. Uh, do you guys have anything? Yes, there's that one sitting in that folder over there, and uh, that's that's how it came. But I think uh, the decision was also uh, we wanted we we've been seeing a lot of long. We like uh, watching a lot of series, so uh, and that is uh, an interesting space. I mean, uh, see, uh, features there are a few limitations. I mean, uh, all uh, mediums will have some uh, advantages and uh, limitations. So you can't uh, actually delve into, uh, I mean, other than your protagonist and antagonist and a couple of other characters, you can't uh, delve deep into uh, like, uh, you know, the uh, secondary characters or the plays or uh, like, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the other elements and all that. So long form actually gives you that scope. So that is one thing which we uh, wanted to explore. So, I mean, the timing was just right so when we started writing. And the writing took a long time. So that's, what did we do for five years? Good question. <laughs> we uh, did a little bit of writing on this. No, the writing alone took a year and a half at this stage itself. So, uh, and then the prep, the production and all that went on for quite some time. Uh, but um, I think getting into uh, long form storytelling, uh, uh, there's a freedom which is associated with OTT uh, content, right? I mean, uh, every creator uh, says that it gives us a lot more freedom. Um, I don't think the freedom is about uh, uh, showing uh, uh, nudity or having violence or uh, use of abusive language or anything like that. I think the freedom is this, what guy people, that it gives us that freedom to uh, explore characters, explore places, explore emotions uh, with uh, a lot more uh, detailing and depth involved. Uh, than uh, a feature film can afford to do because of the, basically the time limitation mm -hmm. more than anything else. So yeah, that's that's been the journey. <laughs> so I wanted to know something that uh, for both of these uh, ventures, you've looked at myth in an interesting way. And myths uh, for obviously Vikram Vedha, you had, you know, the very popular folklore of uh, Vikram and Betal and then the whole idea of where exactly, which, what is right, what is wrong, of course. And for this particular show, you know, it, it's it's just continuously also the backdrop and it's also, per, it also permeates the investigation that's going on. Uh, so I wanted to ask more about the whole use of myth while you're telling a story and specifically a story which is layered. So I think basically this idea comes from uh, uh, Indian myths uh, have generally uh, built on this idea that uh, characters are great. Uh, so even uh, if you take the, the earliest uh, things about Devas and Asuras and uh, Mana, the human beings and all that, uh, nowhere will it be like this is good and this is bad. Uh, Indian mythology has always been about at certain times these people are good and at, at certain times these people are bad. All that put together forms this uh, person. Uh, that has been one of the pervading uh, ideologies of uh, uh, Indian mythology and I'm saying this about even the, the local myths, like what we have taken up over here uh, is in a very ancient uh, myth, it predates uh, most religious context and stuff like that. Uh, it's a very, very hyper-local myth which is uh, uh, practiced by a small community kind. But even in that, we still have that same idea of uh, this goddess who vanquishes uh, the demon. 
but the demon is not considered as that evil, uh, all-encompassing villain kind of thing. He's a demon at that point. Uh, so that's why I think this uh, this uh, this crossroads for us happens between uh, the kind of moral ambiguity which we want to say and uh, the moral ambiguity which is intrinsic in uh, Indian uh, mythology as such. So it makes for a good uh, paralleling of uh, ideas. And uh, I think a lot of our myths are based on people who were alive at that point. So these are stories from the earth, from the people, and we have an oral tradition. So, so these things you know, immediately will have a connect to you emotionally, you know, like in a primary, primal level itself, will have a connect. And uh, this one, uh, so we, we were working on the story, then uh, you know, we read about it, we came across this festival, and uh, uh, heard about the mythology behind it. So it was about finding the uh, demon uh, buried inside, uh, buried in a graveyard. Mm -hmm. So that uh, we thought we equated to memories. The the memories being the graveyard and you finding the demon which is there hidden, I mean, which you suppress. So I mean, it kind of like uh, beautifully fitted the story and the myth uh, fit in. And I, we like the idea of uh, myth mirroring reality. That is something uh, which is very exciting for us today. So I was there at the prime event in Bombay when you know the showcase happened, and I remember even from that moment uh, when the actors came on stage and the performance. Till I think when the trailer was released, or even now when people are watching, you know, or reacting. Let's say sometimes people are, have watched one episode and they already have things to say about how is it. Um, how did you go about creating a cinematic experience, but on OTT? Because uh, again, it's a show. I feel should that should not be watched on a smaller screen. It's it's a show that because it's just, like I said, there's so much layer to it, and there's so much of um, elements to it. it. It's just when you're watching the festival going on, and there's a switch between what's going on there and how the investigation is going on. Even the colors, the elements, and also the or the general darkness that's there, which is not just a trope but also what's happening to each of these characters as, you know, these revelations happen. So just wondering the process of creating that for OT, because we are in a generation where a lot of us buy like expensive phones and we're just like at it, at, you know, metros or, you know, we are watching a show on us. Right. But this is not a show that that gives you the fullest experience when on a phone. You, you have to watch it, you know, somewhere which is bigger. Ideally, you should be watching it in the, the biggest TV possible with proper surround sound also. Actually, a lot of work has gone into uh, the sound also. So if you see it in a uh, proper home theater 5.1 uh, sound, there's a bunch of stuff which will add on to that experience. But I think the mandate was also when we first spoke to Amazon Prime Video, uh, they used a term called cinematic television. Uh, so that's that's what... Uh, Actually, that's what attracted us. I mean, I always... It will be mildly disturbing, you know, if you're just waiting somewhere or traveling and you're just watching a show, mm -hmm. it will be like slightly hard. Yeah. <laughs> we want it to be immersive. We want it to be immersive. And that cinematic uh, TV is what uh, they told and that's what attracted us also. So everything was kind of uh, uh, geared towards that. Uh, so even in the way it is shot, no, we have not shot it uh, uh, like how most OTT does with uh, Mids and close-ups uh, being the, the primary way of establishing the scene. Uh, we have the big wides. Every uh, scene will uh, always cut to a, a long shot where you see the space. Uh, why you get the sense of geography is also because the way our directors and POP have uh, structured the scene. So every scene is placed in a uh, physical uh, space. So there is so our. Uh, I mean, it becomes way more complicated shooting it. I mean, we can't just put four walls and shoot it. We have to go to actual locations or we create a large space. It can't be just a house. It has to be a village, which has to be uh, built times. So all this is something which we do very easily in cinema. I mean, uh, that's, that's how all cinema works. Uh, but for this, for OTT, uh, we also uh, needed to uh, figure out a way by which we are not distancing ourselves from the emotion of the, uh, the performers on screen. Uh, as soon as you keep going wider and show scale and you show uh, depth and breadth, uh, somewhere there's very good chance that the emotion gets lost. Uh, because in, in a theatre, which is a captive audience, uh, even a wide shot to show uh, the emotion will work. But in this OTT space, that doesn't work. You would still need to have bring the actor physically closer to the uh, viewer. So it was, these are things which uh, us and the directors, Brahma and Anushavan, 
and our DOP and all, we discussed this extensively on uh, what would be the visual language of uh, the show. Uh, how are we going to uh, show each location, each scene? Uh, and I, somewhere, I think. I think uh, see, this is a very new, exciting medium. So, uh, like, it shouldn't go, I mean, now, uh, like the television, though. it shouldn't be like. You can actually, you have a chance to create like some really cutting edge content, you know, uh, I mean, uh, with platforms like Amazon also, you, they give you that uh, support in terms of budgets and, uh, I mean, mounting it, marketing it. So we need to actually get like really uh, cutting edge content. I mean. So that's what, that's the big hope. How difficult or easy was the casting process? Because each actor in the show, like each role, no matter how small, how big, I think has left an impact on everybody. So I'm wondering how difficult was it to find all of your characters because <laughs> you have taken you know, so much of time and effort to write this brilliant story. I'm wondering how was that like? So uh, we don't work with uh, a casting director. We don't have that system uh, in uh, Tamil Nadu. Uh, so it's mostly us uh, and the directors and our larger uh, uh, AD team uh, as such. So uh, the main leads, uh, we are kind of, uh, they all started falling into place during the writing process. The writing that. also, like somewhere down the line, you'll see one face pop up <coughs> on the character. So that actually, when that happens, no, then uh, it just, writing also gets easier. Okay? You can actually put a face to the character. So Kadir actually was uh, one of our first uh, choices in mean, uh, so, and uh, so Sakraya was Kadir, I mean, uh, and of course Kadir, we know him, so he got please, I mean, you have to put me in kind of thing. He threatened us. <laughs> and uh, I mean, uh, we're going for good performers. So Aishwarya, Aishwarya is also, I mean, absolutely a, like a great performer. And she has a very uh, rooted, rooted, rootedness to her. She brings a very rootedness to her performance. And uh, Shreya, again, uh, I mean, uh, she's not done something in a long time. Uh, but uh, she's got this amazing screen presence. So uh, it was an uphill task to convince her to come back and act. I mean, she was very reluctant uh, for a long time. And for um, <coughs> all the other characters, uh, our directors uh, also came up with a, a bunch of options on uh, once they read the whole uh, script. Uh, I think, as Rakri said, uh, the main thing was our uh, first pick mark was uh, are they great performers? Uh, not about uh, what is their screen value, uh, what is their reach, how many followers they have on uh, social media. These are not questions which we even knew to ask at that point of time. Our only thing was, okay, uh, we have seen this person's work and uh, we think uh, this person will be right for uh, this character. Then beyond that, we also did uh, extensive uh, auditions yes. and screen tests, uh, uh, especially for, for three or four characters. Like in Tamil, they speak a certain dialect. So we were actually uh, trying to cast people from that area. So non-actors and like, you know, first-time actors kind of thing. So like lots of auditions and not yet. Especially the, the cops in the station. Uh, all of them uh, was through extensive casting. Uh, and I mean, uh, our uh, assistant director's uh, team, they did a great job. I mean, uh, they, we casted in uh, Chennai, in Coimbatore in a bunch of different uh, places, all that information came back to office. Uh, and then there was a team which was going through all of them, making a long list. Uh, and then that would come to us and to the directors and we'll make a short list and then uh, all, all, those, all those people over. Uh, lot, uh, like a couple of the actors were completely new. Uh, they have not done anything uh, before. Uh, so then a process of, and we were convinced about uh, uh, their potential to perform. So extensive rehearsals and uh, the directors got them into uh, training and uh, so yeah that process went on the prep part of it uh, when all this happened uh, went on for quite a bit like four five months uh, of work went into the casting hmm. so uh, moving from there because you mentioned that you know the idea of creating something cinematic and that you waited you know because ott was going to come in big and it did you know specifically i think the covid is where everybody sort of landed up and everybody started taking subscriptions. So I was wondering, um, do you think like, because again, this is a show, obviously it's, the appeal is global. Like, you know, even with mythology, the whole point of mythology is that if you start digging, you would realize that across world, across cultures, the base for mythology does not really change, even though specific myths keep changing. So this is a show that has a, that is looking to have a much wider global reach, right? 
Um, I'm again, I'm speaking somewhere. Uh, so since I'm in Delhi, I'm speaking again from a slightly not end perspective that earlier, let's say if we were watching a movie from South, even, you know, if I'm watching a Tamil film or a series, I would end up watching it all, you know, dubbed, you know, we would mm-hmm. not for the subtitles we would just go you know straight to the dub and of course lose so much of it in the you know because the dialogues weren't really great nobody was taking effort in how the dubbing is going so I was wondering do you think that coming in of OTT in a way and you like the, you've already done one and you've seen the kind of response do you think this gives you also space for, for more local stories with much more global impact because universal human values don't really change again for whatever is shown in the show the universality of human values are still there, even if the show right. is in the town, which is fictional or which is local, that there's a local festival going on. And even if the myth is very specific to, like you said, a community, the idea of vanquishing, the idea of good and evil doesn't change uh, from one state to another one language. So A, just wanted to know what do you think this show would do generally to the idea of the language barrier, which had earlier probably prevented a lot of work from coming up and what it does to the idea of every story which could be both local and global to actually come out now like you know with force and with their and without losing any flavor like you've already right. said there was so much of it was completely local like even the house like i remember this one scene like even when i'm watching all of the you know action and the suspense i'm also noticing these tiny details of the kitchen and the rooms and how the shelves are which are very different and very specific to wherever it's shot right you know, that and yet there's a relatability factor because I know, yeah, you know, it's a small town. This is how it will go. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you for noticing that. Actually, <laughs> a lot of work went into getting those uh, hyper detailing uh, right. And um, this town has been shot across a bunch of different places. We shot in Uti, Kodaikanal, Chennai, Koyambatur, uh, Munar, all these places to create one town. Uh, so somewhere, uh, all these detailing helped us keep that sanity of, okay, this is what the town is. Thank you for noticing that uh, first up. Um, I think, uh, see, like, ideally, uh, we would like people to uh, watch it in the original language with subtitles. Uh, but the point is, uh, there are a lot of people for whom reading subtitle and grabbing the, uh, the emotion on screen becomes tricky. And uh, that is important for us. We can't have, we can't lose you uh, because you're reading it and you miss that expression on the face. Uh, so in that way, dubbing really, really helps uh, to take the thing across. I think also the effort and quality of uh, dubbing uh, is becoming way better. Um, I think what was happening in uh, uh, the mid uh, 2000s and early 2010s and all that, everything was getting dubbed. I mean, a lot of fossils, uh, uh content was getting dubbed in Hindi, but the quality of dubbing was very bad because it was just a slapdash, let's throw it out kind of thing. Uh, now, uh, there is uh, a great effort to which goes into identifying the right voice for the right character. Uh, there are uh, specific vendors who uh, do that and uh, they take great uh, uh, interest in keeping it as close to the original. Uh, in terms of tonality, in terms of the way it is spoken and all that. And this is only going to get better and better now that people have got onto that bandwagon of let's make a good dubbing uh, uh, process. It will become better and better. So the dub version will be very close to the original uh, language. And as creator storytellers, uh, I mean, ultimately what do you want people to do? You want more and more people to watch your stuff. So and that, no, that I don't think it is possible like 10 years back. Like right now, I mean, uh, and uh, the what Amazon has done, like, you know, they've dubbed it in uh, more than 30 languages and take, uh, taken the show to like uh, 240 uh, territories or something. You know? So that is like, uh, I mean, uh, those are things which we can't imagine without uh, the technology and the will to do that. You know? so, and uh, I mean, uh, what you said is exactly what we have been screaming from the rooftop. Uh, local is the new global. Uh, the more uh, uh, localized your content is, the more uh, fidelity it has to an actual place and time. I think people all around the world will uh, start connecting to that because uh, human emotions will translate across the world. How we react to a certain situation, it might be slightly different in a Nordic country versus how it is over here. Uh, it, it, we might be a little more open uh, with our emotions. Uh, while in some places they might be a little more tight with their emotions, more restrained with their emotions. But somewhere I think we can recognize each other. 
So nice. that person sitting over there, I know he's going to pain, though he's not showing it. While that person will look at me and be screaming in pain, he'll recognize it as pain. So that emotion remains the same. The behavior of that emotion, uh, the behavioral manifestation of that emotion will change in each uh, geographical entity, each culture and all that. Uh, I think we are all trying to connect to those base emotions. Loss, pain, joy, anger, all these things, I think, uh, give us a broad enough base uh, that our stories can connect anywhere in the world. Okay, thank you so much. This has been such a wonderful uh, interview and I think uh, I was really looking forward to this because like I said, I absolutely love the show. After long time, I've watched something that's uh, so amazing and you know, I like I said, I don't even have to say anything. I think you already have the reaction from everybody. <laughs> Thanks. 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 That's always good to hear. <laughs> and we are waiting for the Hindi adaptation now of Vikram Veda. So yeah, let's <laughs> go. Thanks. Thanks. Congratulations Thanks. on a wonderful show and thank you for it. Uh, Thank you.